Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. You might be very familiar with the gear lever and you know that it's used for shifting the gears. But do you know why the gear shifting is necessary and how does the shifting of the gear affect the speed of the vehicle? If not, this video will provide you answers for these questions. In this video, we're going to discuss a gearbox used in manual transmission systems. Assume that you're going to start a vehicle. As the vehicle is at rest, the inertia will be more and you'll need more torque to move the vehicle. Meanwhile, as the vehicle starts moving, it gains momentum. Thus, the torque required will be comparatively less and we tend to speed up the vehicle at this time. This shows that the amount of torque required varies and we need a setup to ensure this. We know that speed and torque are inversely proportional. Therefore, the speed of the wheels has to be varied to vary the torque according to the requirement. This is ensured by means of a gearbox. A gearbox is an element of the automobile transmission system that has a set of gears that helps in varying the torque and speed of the vehicle. But how does that happen? Let us take gears which are meshed with each other. Let the number of teeth on the second gear be twice that of the first one. Now, when the first gear is rotated, the second one rotates as well. Here, we can notice that the smaller gear has to make two complete rotations to make the bigger gear rotate once. That is, the input speed is reduced to half of its value. As the speed reduces, torque increases. Similarly, when the number of teeth in the gears are changed, the speed and torque transmitted changes as well. To achieve this, a gearbox contains meshing gears of different sizes for providing different speeds. Other than varying the speed, the gearbox helps in making the vehicle move in reverse direction as well. Well, let's see how this happens. In a gear transmission, the output gear rotates in the opposite direction to that of the input shaft. In order to change the direction of transmission, an additional gear called the idler gear is placed between the gears. This makes both the input and output shaft rotate in the same direction, changing the direction of the drive. With this, we have seen the functions of the gearbox and how it achieves them. Gearboxes are of two types, manually operated gearboxes and automatic gearboxes. Manually operated gearboxes are further classified into three types. They are sliding mesh type, constant mesh type, and synchro mesh type. Now let us move on to see the very basic type of gearbox, a sliding mesh gearbox. A sliding gearbox consists of an input shaft, a splined output shaft, lay shaft and an idler shaft. The input shaft is the clutch shaft and the output shaft transmits motion to the wheels. There is a clutch gear attached to the input shaft and it's in constant mesh with a fixed gear on the lay shaft. So the lay shaft rotates whenever the input shaft rotates. The output shaft and the lay shaft consists of three and four gears respectively and there is also an idler gear in the idler shaft. The position of the gears on the lay shaft are fixed whereas the gears on the output shaft can slide over the splines and mesh with their respective shafts. This is why this gearbox is called a sliding mesh gearbox. Now let us name all these gears for easy understanding. Let's call the gear on the input shaft as A and its respective meshing gear in the lay shaft as B. Let the gears in the output shaft be called as 1, 2 and 3 and the gears in the lay shaft as C, D, E and F. Let the idler gear be 5 and it will be in constant mesh with the gear F. In addition to all these, there is a door clutch located between the gears A and 3. Now let us move on to see how this works. Unless and until the output gears mesh with others, the output shaft will not rotate. That is, the motion will not be transmitted to the wheels. But when the input shaft rotates, the lay shaft rotates as well. Because of the constant meshing of gears, this is said to be neutral position and it permits the engine to run without transferring the motion to the wheels. Then, the driver operates the gear lever which is connected to a mechanism for shifting gears. We will discuss that in a separate video. For the first gear, the gear 1 of the output shaft meshes with the gear C of the lay shaft. Now, the speed is reduced by a large amount because of the large size of the gear and so there will be a greater amount of torque. When the driver moves the lever to second gear, the gear 2 slides and meshes with the gear D. Now the speed reduction will be lesser and so the speed transmitted will be comparatively more. Similarly, in the third gear, the gear 3 slides and meshes with the gear E transferring a high speed and a lesser amount of torque. The drives obtained by meshing of the gears 1 and C, 2 and D and 3 and E are said to be indirect drives as the motion is transmitted to the output shaft via the lay shaft. For the final gear, that is fourth gear, the gear 3 slides and meshes directly with the gear of the input shaft with the help of the dog clutch. This makes the output shaft rotate at the same speed of the input shaft and the drive is said to be direct drive. Finally, we have the reverse gear. It is obtained when the gear 1 meshes with the gear F. The idler gear present in between 
makes the output shaft rotate in the opposite direction, making the vehicle to move in the reverse direction. This is the operation of the sliding mesh gearbox. Though this gearbox is simple in design and construction, it has few disadvantages. It can only use spur gears as the teeth angle in helical gears don't permit the gears to engage or disengage while shifting. The operation is noisy and it requires huge effort and skill to operate. Because of these disadvantages, this gearbox is not usually preferred. That's all about the sliding mesh gearbox. We will discuss the other types of gearboxes in the upcoming videos. Until then, bye!